What is up Flutter devs? In the last video, we worked on animated circle packing using the Flutter processing package. Today, we're going to continue with that exercise by using circle packing to spell out the word Flutter in text. Let's get into it. Here's pretty much where we left off last time. We have a bunch of circles packing the screen. Let's start by commenting out the part that's generating all those circles so we can talk for just a minute about some text. Here we are in the code. Here's our typical draw method for our sketch. Uh, actually, we have this circle that we were always adding to the center. I should have gotten rid of that in the last one, but I didn't. We'll get rid of it now. Here in draw, this is where we generate and draw all the circles. We're going to comment out all of that for just a moment. So that now, uh, let's see, what are we complaining about? Mm. Oh, needed one more line. Okay. Now we're drawing black. And this is going to allow us to load the image that we want to show that has the text on it. And then we're going to talk about what we're going to do with that image. Here in setup, uh, we will, actually, we, uh, we want a variable for this, I guess. So we will say late, and this is going to be an image, and we want the one from Dart UI. That's going to be text image. And we're going to say text image equals await load image. I've already got this image in the project. I just need to get the path here. See what is it complaining about? I think we're going to have to do some hiding here. So material, the material package has a widget called image. That's not what we want. So we're going to hide image and then we're fine. Now we have the kind of image that comes from the Dart UI package. We're going to load that in and then down here in draw, for the moment at least, we're going to draw the image. Save that. Uh, let's see. Okay, so upset about my late initialization. I don't know. Let's try a hot restart. Okay, fine. Let's say that this is optional, even though it's not. And then we'll come down here and we'll say, no, believe me, it exists. Now what's it complaining about? Unable to load the asset. Okay, well let's go make sure that I have the correct location for that. Assets, coding dash train, ah, flutter dash text. There we go. And now I think I can make this a late initialization again. Okay, there's the text. And our goal, what we want to do now, is instead of packing the entire sketch area with circles, we just want to generate circles where we have white pixels so that as they expand and hit each other, we can roughly see F-L-U-T-T-E-R painted on the screen. That's what we want to do. Now, we could just randomly look for pixels and see if the pixel is white or black. But I'm going to follow the approach here that Dan took in the coding train. And when we first load the image, we're just going to locate all of the white pixels in the image and hold on to that as a list and then randomly pick locations in the list of available pixels. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. Up here, we want white pixels as a list. We're going to store offsets and see how that goes. After we've loaded the image, we then need to get the bytes for the image, the byte data. So we're going to say image bytes equals, we're going to say text image dot two byte data. And we're going to say as byte data. I say that to say that it's not optional. It definitely exists. And then we need to loop through all of the pixels in the entire image. So we can say, column equals zero, where column is less than 
text image dot width column plus equals one. And then we need the other loop, which is the row, which will start at zero. Row is less than text image dot height. Row plus equals one. Now we can specify an individual pixel. So we're gonna say pixel offset, as in offset in the byte data. We're gonna say row times text image dot width, because for every row that we add, we need, to, we need to include the offset of all the pixels in the rows above us. So that's row times width. And then we're going to add the column because we've gone down some number of rows and then we've gone over some number of well, pixels, but columns. So entire rows plus part of a row, essentially, which we call column. But we also have to multiply that number by four because there are four bytes per pixel. Red, green, blue, alpha, four bytes, multiply by four. What we're then going to get is an RGBA color, not an ARGB color, an, an RGBA color. Image bytes get uint32. Why? Because there's eight bits per byte and there's four bytes per color. What's eight times four? It's 32. We're going to say pixel offset. So we're saying essentially give us the value of the pixel at this offset. And that value is just a 32-bit integer, which represents an RGBA color. If RGBA color equals a fully opaque white, then we're going to say white pixels dot add offset column comma row. And we're going to have to say to double, to double, and this should be equals, equals. After we've gone through this, this, both of these loops together, we have collected every single white pixel in the image. That's a lot. It's a lot of pixels that we're collecting, but we have them all here in white pixels which means that when we go to create new circles, we can just select from pixels inside of white pixels or locations inside of white pixels. So let's go make that adjustment. This is the part, well, we can uncomment all of this. And we're going to see that we're right back to filling the entire screen, which is not what we want. By the way, I'm also, we, I took this number circles per frame, took it way up previously. Let's take that down to something like two. I think I like that amount of circle generation. But what we need to change here is the behavior for generating the new circles. See, we have this random offset and the random offset is based on any random X and Y value in the entire sketch. And that's not what we want. Instead, we want to say white pixels, which is a list a list we can index with an integer, right? An integer between zero and the size of the list. So we will say random between zero and white pixels dot length. And then we're going to say floor that to an integer. Let's see, uh, there's not that's sorry, that's not what needs to floor. We need to floor this to an integer. So we're, it's still a, it's a random offset in that it's a random selection from a set of specifically chosen pixels. And I think that might actually be all it takes to accomplish this change. Let's see. Yeah, check that out. Now, if some of these circles, again, are if, if we feel like they're too large, what we can do is we can come up here and we can say, generate five circles per frame. And now they pack faster, which prevents any of them from becoming too large. Now, I think that's pretty cool. I think, you know, I think many of us would look at this effect and we'd think that there's more to it than this. And in my opinion, this is a pretty darn easy way to accomplish a neat effect. I think it becomes even cooler if we don't draw the text image. I think that one, that looks pretty cool. You don't see it coming. You're like, what's it making? What's it making? And it's making text, F-L-U-T-T-E-R, flutter. 
spelled with circle packed text. So that is this final exercise related to animated circle packing. Again, let's redux what we just did. We had a bitmap image with flutter text on it, flutter spelled out in the bitmap image. We loaded the image into memory. We went pixel by pixel through all of the data in the image. Every pixel that had a white color, we put the position of that pixel into a list, the X and Y coordinate of that pixel into a list. Then, and we only did, we did that once, that's a pre-processing step in setup. Then in our draw function, we kept it exactly the same as it was in the previous exercise, except when we generate new circles, we don't truly choose a random XY coordinate from anywhere on the screen. We choose a random offset or XY coordinate from the list of white pixels. All we had to do was limit the starting position of the new circles, and now we're circle packing text. And because we fill out enough space like if we only generated one circle per letter, then that circle would grow to be much larger than the letter. But because we generate so many circles in the letter area, it guarantees us that these circles are all going to stop expanding before they get too large. And so you can still see what the text looks like. So that'll do it for this video. I think in the next one, we'll continue with some more coding challenges and I look forward to seeing you then.